The U.S. government on Monday sanctioned three more officials of the outgoing government of Liberian President George Weah for alleged corruption. The officials are Finance Minister Sami Otoya, the Senators Albert Chia and Emmanuel Nukwe. According to the Liberian Front Page Africa newspaper, the sanctions come as a response to allegations that the three allegedly abused their public positions by soliciting, accepting and offering bribes to manipulate legislative processes and public funding. The U.S. also sanctioned Monrovia City Mayor Jefferson Koji over the weekend for alleged human rights abuses and corruption. Rodney Sia is the publisher and editor-in-chief of Front Page Africa News Magazine. He tells me the new sanctions are an additional headache for the outgoing We Are government. Well, Jim, this is... Uh a rather shocking development. Although some kind of sanctions were expected, the the sanction last week Friday of uh, Jefferson Koji, the Monrovia City Mayor, people expected more uh, names to be called, but just the timing was uncertain because annually the U.S. uh, Treasury Department released the corruption sanctions on International Anti-Corruption Day, which fell this year on Saturday. So people thought that the first sanction with Koji, which took place on Friday, was the main sanctions. But this latest development late Monday night uh, suggests that uh, it's going to be a serious headache for the departing George Weah government. Um, the sanctions itself uh, speak volume about the practice of the Weah administration, speaking of bribery to the legislature. So, uh, Rodney, and this is coming as the legislature is preparing to elect a speaker. But how common is this practice when it says here that these officials accept it and offer bribes to manipulate legislature? Interestingly, James, as you mentioned, the legislative uh, elections coming up soon. Uh, one of those who was sanctioned last night, Emmanuel Nukwe is believed to have been one of the key candidates for the Senate pro term position. So apparently the U.S. government is trying to send a message to the legislatures, especially those incoming new ones. But now the, that's something that I think uh, you have to look at it carefully because the timing of it all in terms of the ongoing campaign for the Senate pro term and the speaker position in the legislature, the timing of it, of it all is just uh, mind-boggling that the U.S. decided to put this list out on the eve of these uh, campaigning for the legislative uh, leadership positions. You mentioned the mayor of Monrovia, Jefferson Koji, who was also sanctioned last week. I understand he spoke to the media. Uh, What did he have to say? He believes that the charges against him were uh, unfair. Uh, He thinks that uh, it's a witch hunt. Um, His supporters uh, carried him aloft uh, on the top of their heads, celebrating him and proclaiming him as uh, one of the strongest uh, young advocates in the ruling CDC government. And I think he feels like he doesn't understand why the charges were brought against him. He thinks that there's a witch hunt. Um, As you know, there were lots of allegations against Mr. Koji during the last five, six years, whenever there was some kind of violence or some kind of, uh, you know, disturbance a riot thing. He was always at the center of allegations um, that he was involved in some kind of way. So these uh, reports over the last four, five, six years, um, I think, were the reasons why the U.S. decided to uh, sanction Mr. Koji. Rodney, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, James. Rodney C. is the editor-in-chief and publisher of Liberia's Front Page Africa newspaper. He was speaking with us from the Liberian capital, Monrovia. Malawi President Lazro Chakwera has announced five commitments that his administration will pursue to uphold the respect of human rights. President Chakwera made the announcement Monday during the official commemoration of International Human Rights Day in Blantyre. His announcement comes two days after human rights defenders complained during a press conference about state interference and intimidation. President Razalas Chakwera said the commemorations of this year's International Human Rights Day coincides with the 75th anniversary of the adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights by the United Nations. President Chakwera said the special occasion has prompted him to announce five commitments he recently made to the international community on behalf of Malawians. First, ours is a commitment to actively engage in the United Nations human rights mechanisms 
including the Human Rights Council and treaty bodies. Secondly, ours is a commitment to adopt legislation and policies that provide enhanced protection for marginalized groups, including women, children, older persons, and persons with disabilities. His announcement came two days after human rights defenders said they were concerned with state interference and intimidation against them. The rights campaigners cited several incidents, including the arrest last week of activist Boni Kalindo following anti-government protests he led in southern and northern Malawi two weeks ago. In her speech, United Nations Resident Coordinator for Malawi, Rebecca Adad Donto, congratulated Malawi's re-election to the UN's Human Rights Council. She, however, said its selection should include a commitment to observe and respect the human rights of all Malawians. Within Malawi, economic disparities persist, predominantly impacting rural populations and contributing to mental health challenges. Over half of Malawians grapple with poverty, and that means there is no freedom from want. The rights campaigners asked the government to swiftly address violations which many Malawians are currently facing, especially economic rights caused by the recent 44% devaluation of Malawi local currency. But Jacquera said the solution to harsh economic problems caused by the devaluation and the shortage of foreign exchange should not be left to the government alone. When we discuss harsh economic realities like shortage of forex and the devaluation, every privileged Malawian must be accountable to invest in anything productive that generates forex for the country, strengthens our currency, and creates opportunities for other Malawians to have jobs and enjoy their economic rights. A representative of the civil rights campaigners in Malawi, Maggie Katewira Banda, called for the review of the laws that prevent women from participating in the government. And in this regard, we are talking about parliament, we are talking about the local government. We still see that representation of women is still on the lower side. And this we also attribute to the fact that we don't have a specific law that will promote women into elected positions. However, President Jaquera said his administration is well. Zimbabweans have expressed disbelief following the accolade bestowed upon Muthuri Nchumbre, who was declared Best African Finance Minister of the Year amid the country's economic challenges. On X, formerly known as Twitter, one user said that the award to applauding a captain of stealing a ship straight into an iceberg, while another rebutted the greatest joke of the decade. Zimbabwe's staggering unemployment rate reaching 85% as indicated by economists, coupled with a reliance on US dollars for 80% of transactions due to dwindling confidence in the local currency, underscores the economic difficulties faced by the nation. Reputation Poll International, an organization specializing in reputation management, represented Mr. Nchumpe with the award on Sanji. Appointed by President Emerson Munangagwa in 2018, the minister expressed his delight in receiving the honor, attributing it to the transformative efforts of the Terrali team. However, activist Hopewell Chinono denounced the award as an insult to Zimbabweans, particularly in light of Mr. Chumbe's recent budget, deemed by Chinono as the most anti-people national budget that Zimbabwe has ever had. The budget includes tax increases and a surge in passport fees to US dollar 200. Chinono further criticized Misa Chumbre for presiding over what he called the worst economy in the world, attributing it to misguided and corrupt policies. 
Zimbabwe's economic struggles date back decades, marked by the withdrawal of the Zimbabwean dollar in 2009 due to hyperinflation. Critics attribute the challenges to mismanagement by the ruling ZANU PF party. Initially under Robert E. Mugari and later under Mr. Munangagwa, while the government blames Western sanctions. In the backdrop of these economic wars, Zimbabwe recently conducted controversial by-elections following the recall of MPs from the, man, from the main opposition party. Citizens' Coalition for Change CCC, ZAN-PF candidates secured seven out of nine by-elections but fell three seats short of the two-thirds parliamentary majority required for constitutional changes.